Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be going through my most anticipated releases for 2023. Which, ah, uh, 2023? No. Also, I don't know why the collar of this jumper is so weird, but then actually I think I do, which is because I go like this all the time. <laughs> so yeah, I really need to stop doing that because it just it looks weird now. <laughs> my list from last year, see how we did. The answer, not very good, I don't think. <laughs> um, So, where did I have my anticipated? Okay, so anticipated from last year, Gallant by B. Schwab, read that, loved it. Fevered Star by Rebecca Ronhorst, read that, enjoyed it. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of that series in general, but I love the audiobooks, like the narrators. Chain of Thorns, that got pushed back. Babel by R.F. Kong, I've kind of lost interest in that. I just, I think eventually I will get to it. Dark Academia is not really my thing. And it is very big and there's footnotes and like, I'm sure that it is a brilliant book, but I just personally don't think, especially right now, I don't think if I read it right now, I don't think I would enjoy it. So I'm going to wait. Hopefully the hype will die down maybe a little and maybe like one day I'll find myself really wanting to read it. Where the Drowned Girls Go by Sean McGuire, read that. Although I'm not giving you star ratings for these. So Gallant was five, Fever Star was four, um, Where the Drowned Girls Go was four. The Golden Enclaves, I have not read that, but that's because the paperback isn't out until I think early enough next year. But The Last Graduate paperback was also kind of on my anticipated release, which I have read that and I gave that four stars. Then we have The Discord of Gods. I'm getting that for Christmas. I have not even read The House of Always um, or I have also not finished The Memory of Souls. So I got ahead of myself there. Sunbearer's Trial, I no longer have an interest in that. It's YA fantasy. I'm kind of growing out of that. Um, but I have heard that he's writing a sequel to Cemetery Boys, which I will read. <laughs> Then we have The Luminaries by Susan Dennard and I'm waiting for my paperback which doesn't come out until January. So again, you'll see it in a minute. <laughs> then we have Real River of Silver by S.A. Chakraborty, which I have read, I have loved. I gave that I think a 5 stars or a 4.5. Um, just a collection of short stories, very much enjoyed it. I get, but I am actually waiting for the paperback of that to come out. I listened to it on an, as audiobook um, and I want the paperback to come out so I can have matching editions. Then I had Six Crimson Cranes <laughs> paperback, um, which I have bought and I think I'm hopefully going to read that before the end of the year, but for now, no. <laughs> and then possible releases I have, Dreamers Trilogy number three, which yes, that did come out, Grey Warren, but I'm getting that for Christmas. Then we have Iron Widow 2, that's not happening this year. Essay Tracker Bordy, pirate book, didn't have a name then, that's happening next year. Then I have um, Witchlands number five. That's not happening until 2024, probably. And then Threads of Power, that's happening next year. Firstly, we're gonna go through some paperback releases that I'm looking forward to because I'm a paperback girly. Number one is Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chapeco. I'm waiting for the American paperback of this to come out because I think the UK cover is really ugly. Um, I have been reading Rin Chapeco's books. I enjoy most of them. Um, I love the Never Tilting World duology. I read The Girl from the Well, really, really enjoyed that. Wicked As You Wish was a three stars. Bone Witch was like a really low four stars. So like kind of nearly more of a 3.5, but it's okay. Um, but this is their first adult novel, I believe. And it's, I think maybe vampires and I think there's polyamory and I don't really know anything about it, but I'm very excited for it. Also keeping on the Rin Chapeco train, um, we have The Suffering, which is actually an old book of theirs. Um, it is the sequel to The Girl in the Well, but The Girl in the Well, I'm, you know, I'm gonna go grab it because the cover, I love the cover. So the cover, um, this I think originally came out in 2014, but it just got a re-release slash cover redesign and like, it is so pretty. I think it's great. I think this is a great cover and I'm really hoping that they do The Suffering, which is a sequel to this. I hope that they do a re-release of that with a matching cover. So <laughs> then number three, we have The Golden Enclave by Naomi Nilvik and I'm so excited for it. I was going to really listen to the audiobook, but my library doesn't have the audiobook either. And I, I need, I need, I need to read this. Number four is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I have listened to the audiobook of this this year and spoiler alert, um, I mean, there are still a couple of books that could overtake it, but currently it is my favorite book of the year. It is nonfiction. It is small essays of John Green just ranking random ass things from our lifetime. 
and it is brilliantly done and he makes the smallest things seem so much bigger than they are and there was one chapter about baseball and I don't understand baseball I'm not American and I like I was almost crying at the end of that chapter so I want I want to own a physical copy of it because it is absolutely one of my favorite books and yeah a, a real surprise there we have the luminaries by Susan Dennard um I actually have already pre-ordered my copy of it but um I mean with Waterstones who knows when I'll get it but I'm really excited to read it I love Susan Dennard and the edges from the Waterstones one will look really nice but now let's move in to the actual most anticipated releases so not paperbacks like these are books that are being released and I'm telling you right now I think I have 10 and I've actually ranked them and put your guesses of like the top three down below or even just the top one if you can't think of top three but like I'm pretty I'm predictable okay you can guess this I believe in you <laughs> number 10 is The Labyrinth's Hearth which is the third book in the Rook in the Rose series which I have only read the first book <laughs> um I actually haven't even read the first book I'm like halfway through the first book but the covers are so pretty and I'm enjoying the story so far like I like the writing I like the setting like and I'm intrigued by the politics of the world so I'm like <laughs> I'm hoping that I will stay liking it and that this will be I can't even like describe what the books are about so, like this follows a con woman she is trying to trick this noble family into thinking that she is like a long lost relative and so she can you know take their money then number nine is a book that i actually don't even know what it's about but it's family lore by elizabeth acevedo and i have read two elizabeth acevedo books i've read with the fire on high and i've also read the poet x i have not read um half on your land because i need the audiobook if i'm gonna listen to one of her ones written in verse like I'm gonna need the audiobook but The Poet X was one of my favorite books of last year a real surprise I did not think I would like a book written in verse but it made me cry and that very rarely happens and this is her first adult book I have no idea what it's about I think it is written in prose um and family lore I mean I'm gonna guess it's about family <laughs> then number eight is going to be Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare which why am I putting this on my anticipated release when like do I even care also actually now that I think of it I think Swordcatcher might also be coming out which is her adult debut and I'm gonna give that a try but I don't actually have high hopes for it um because I feel like her writing style is just it's such a YA writing style I have given the first two books in the series four stars <laughs> they're okay I like them I think when I read Cassandra Clare at this point of my life it is good fun her writing style is always super quick to get into but her characters her plots we've seen it all before at this stage there is very little she can do now to surprise me and I think now that I have just accepted that that none of her books are ever going to be favorites for me anymore I can enjoy them for what they are which is a fun time I've grown out of that stage of my life but I started reading the, those books when I was I think maybe 13 12 13 and yeah I think I should be might have been 12 and like yeah it's almost like it's like nine years later <laughs> and I am not giving up now <laughs> like she has said that after the last hours there's going to be one more trilogy in the Shadow Underworld which is the Wicked Powers so I'm not gonna give up before I finish the entire Shadow Underworld like I'm not giving up <laughs> so yes so that is why I'm continuing to read her books and also as I said they are fun and they're quick and easy to read despite the fact they're huge they're usually like you can read them in like two or three days. Seven is Lost in the Moment and Found which is the next Wayward Children's book which again I have mixed opinions on these like I give them four I've never given them one five stars and I don't think I've ever given one one star but I have had two threes and fours <laughs> so like very mixed opinions on this series in general but 
this is another one i actually don't even know who this follows but they always come out in january and i basically listen to them on release date or like a couple of days after because they're like three hours long i put them on like two three times speed like it takes a little over an hour for me to read the book so it's just a quick read to get you off to a good start in the january you know get a one book ticked off your list. <laughs> Six is going to be The Mirrored Heavens by Rebecca Roanhorse. I believe this is the last book in this trilogy. I have mixed feelings on this book. Like I don't think there's a lot of plot whatsoever. Like it is mostly vibes, characters, and writing. <laughs> like but they're good. They're solid. And I will say because like I've seen a lot of people complaining that the second book has middle book syndrome. I'm like the second book has just as much plot as the first book does which is to say none. So like I'm not sure what people were reading between the difference of them. I was like the first book did not have much of a plot either. He was just moving from one place to the other. That was not much plot. <laughs> but um that's my little rant about it. Um but the audiobook narrators are brilliant and so I just love to listen to these books. <laughs> so I'm gonna finish this series and I'm gonna listen to the audiobook and I'm gonna have a good time while doing it. <laughs> So now we're on to number five and that is The Witch King by Martha Wells. I have no idea again what this book is about. It's like it's honestly a problem. I just I'm, I'm like I recognize author. <laughs> I will read. Which actually a bit late in the video to be saying this. All of these are like authors I've read from before. I very rarely put like debut books on my most anticipated release because I don't really anticipate them because I don't know what to expect. <laughs> like Whereas all of these authors, like, I've read from them. I've enjoyed their books. So, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna continue reading their books. Whereas, like, with, like, a debut author, like, I'm gonna wait and see if other people are enjoying it. And then I will become excited for it. So, this is, like, actually anticipated. Not just looked at the cover and thought it was pretty. Though, also, a lot of them are also bad. So, yeah. So, The Witch King, I... I'm trying to remember. I have definitely read the synopsis, but I can't remember what it said. Um, but it's Martha Wells. She's written the Murderbot Diaries series and also a whole load of other fantasy books. But I feel like it's easier sometimes when an author is bringing out new books. It's a lot easier to read what they're bringing out instead of like trying to figure out where you should start in their backlist. So I do want to read her backlist, but I'm like, okay, this is her new fantasy that she's coming out with. Uh, so it's probably a good place to start. <laughs> On to number four and that is The Adventures of Amina al Safiri. Not 100% sure on the pronunciation of that. I might have to double check it. But by S.H. Chuck Brody, it is her little pirate adventure book. I'm very excited for it. Um, obviously I love S.H. Chuck Brody. The Dave Bad Trilogy is one of my absolute favorite series of all time and it's like definitely top 10. So I love it a lot. And this is her new project that she's starting. Um, I don't think she's written anything else outside of the David Bad world yet. So I'm very excited and intrigued. And as I said, it's a pirate adventure story, which does make me a little nervous because I don't have the best look with a book set on the sea. I'm thinking Fable, The Bone Ships. No. <laughs> but like, I enjoyed The Life Ship Traders. But I will say that was my least favorite well not including the rain wilds but like I've always enjoyed the Fitz trilogies more than like the live ships but I still enjoy those so like the sea can work for me but it makes me a little nervous <laughs> but I'm hopeful because it's SA Shark 40. My top three three guys I want to you know give me a dr dr drum roll you know like this was on like a maybe pile but it recently got confirmed that it is coming. <laughs> System Collapse by Martha Wells. The seventh book in the Murderbot series. Murderbot was a book series that I discovered this year. Well, okay, I already knew of its existence, but I started reading it this year. I read it for. What was it? Oh, yeah, it was TBRPG Athon. Oh, that was so long ago. In January, I started the series and I just really had such a good time with them. And yeah, I had so much fun. I finished the entire series by March. But then. I gave them all four stars because I was like novellas it's very hard for me to get like really into the story but I didn't stop thinking about those books basically all year and how much fun it was and then like I was in such a bad slump and I was kind of starting to come out of it 
but like what I really wanted was to reread the Murderbot series and so I did. So I've read the entire Murderbot series twice this year <laughs> and the second time up I bumped some of the ratings up to five stars and yeah it's like one of my favorite series as well and it's just so much fun and I'm really excited to continue it and for another book to come out but also I'm a little nervous because this is the first one that's coming out with me like actually being up to date and all of that also I 100% recommend the audiobooks for them absolute top tier narration then on to number two again drum roll please The Chalice of the Gods by Rick Riordan a Percy Jackson book in 2023 So yes, a Percy Jackson book. No, not just a Percy Jackson book. A first person perspective Percy Jackson book. That is a big difference because I feel like, no. Like the Heroes of Olympus, like I enjoyed them, but no, it was nothing compared to being in Percy's head all of the time. <laughs> like being in Percy's head is great fun. <laughs> and when I saw Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods, I was like, what? And then as I was reading, it is the original trio. It is Annabeth, Grover, and Percy. And it is, in his perspective, first person. Usually I prefer multi-perspective, but like, no. In Percy Jackson, I want to be in his head because it's so funny. And I'm just so excited for this. It sounds like it's going to be very chaotic. <laughs> and I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. Also, I will say The Sun and the Star is also coming out in like May so like way earlier in the year but there is a problem with that which is I have not read The Trials of Apollo yet and so while I am I like I'm like oh that sounds interesting like that book does but I have not read The Trials of Apollo so <laughs> I would have to read the entirety of those and I'm not really 100% sure if I want to read The Trials of Apollo because it doesn't have Percy in it <laughs> so yeah I'm a Percy Jackson stan through and through and then to nobody's surprise whatsoever my most anticipated release of the year is Threads of Power number one by V.E. Schwab. So excited. It's finally happening! Like it originally was supposed to be released like released in 2019. Like when she first came up with the idea for the story she was like aiming to write it for 2019 and then she just got sidetracked with other projects you know like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and Gallant and all of those. So um, so Threads of Power got pushed to the side and finally, I think it was last year, she finally dug it out. I was like, it's time. And I'm like, yes, yes, it is time. So yes, Threads of Power number one. If you didn't know me, A Darker Shade of Magic is probably my favorite series of all time. It is probably number one. It is a comfort read. It is a comfort reread a lot, um, like all of the time. I just I've read it about five times now and I just love it it's just so much fun I just love them <laughs> and this is a companion series so it is set I think a good few years after the original trilogy and it does have new main characters but our original characters appear as major side characters and I'm so excited to see them again. I'm so excited to see them again. And I'm sure it's going to be pretty angsty based on like the ending of the last one. Um, and I can't wait for it. But also with that comes an extreme fear because number one, what if I don't love it? Um, and then I'm like, I've basically loved every V.E. Schwab book. Like I think the lowest I've ever given her is the three stars. And that was the Everyday Angel collection, which is written for really young readers. <laughs> So, and even th then, one of those I did give her four stars. <laughs> so, like, I always give her four or five stars. So, it's very unlikely that I will dislike this book. Like, I'm gonna at least like it. <laughs> and then, the other th thing is, like, what if she kills off one of my favorite characters? Like, she is not afraid to kill off characters. And if Kel dies, I will riot. <laughs> so afraid. And I'm so excited. I'm just, uh, it's finally happening. So yeah, 
and I don't think she's releasing anything else new next year. I think Addie LaRue paperbacks, UK and US, are coming out next year, as well as the Gallant paperbacks. And then the matching edition to the This Savage Song, like, special edition that came out this year, is also going to be coming out. So, like, she does technically have, like, a lot of releases next year, but, like, this is her only, like, brand new one. So I am also really excited for the Our Dark Duet hardback. Um, which I suppose I could have mentioned that in paperback releases as, like, you know a book that's coming out that has already been out you know um because like it's like right up there so i'm not getting down this side song but it is such a pretty edition the edges and the naked cover are so pretty like the, the actual like dust jacket i could give or take but like the naked cover and the edges like is the most beautiful shade of red and it has like a violin on the front and then it has like marks all around the edge and so i'm really uh intrigued about what they will do for our dark duet i haven't gone on a real tangent here like we're supposed to be talking about sides of power but now we're on to our dark duet but yeah i'm really intrigued about what they'll put on the heart back and what color it'll be i imagine it'll be blue and then um i'm kind of thinking like in my head anyway i'm imagining maybe a lighter like because that's kind of more like kate's book i suppose like the first one is august and like the violin and all of that that relates to august then the second one i imagine they would be putting stuff to do with kate so i'm kind of thinking mm, it would probably be her lighter maybe and then i don't know what they would put up along the edges of it so i'm just very excited for vu schwab next year i'm always excited for vu schwab because i love vu schwab <laughs> so yeah so thank you guys so much for watching i do hope you enjoyed if you did subscribe and i will see you all in the next one bye mm -hmm.